We'd like to welcome you, Mr. Michal Stelirov, in our show, Good Morning Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. <laughs> okay. Pravite? Uh, How do you say hello in Russian? Priviet. Priviet. Okay, so you're welcome. And of course, we'll welcome the guest, Dr. Faisal Ahmed Abdul Ghafoor, the President of the Middle East Foundation for the Middle East. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. حياكم الله طبعا واعتقد تقنية جديدة خصوصا نستخدمها في مجال البناء فبالتالي we'd like to know at the beginning uh, what is the uh, nanotechnology usage in uh, construction basically uh, when we talk about nanotechnologies uh, it means that uh, the materials they are used or the technologies they are used to deal with uh, the particles within nano size mm -hmm. which is just one billion of a meter so when we talk about one nanometer so they look to be fairly small but uh, in the meantime, uh, you can see the particular usage of these materials in quite uh, normal stuff. For mm -hmm. example, this is a, a glass fiber rebar, and the glass fiber stick. So this is the fiberglass uh, stick that you have here? This is used in construction? This, this is a rebar uh, made from fiberglass. And when you think about fiberglass, you see uh, one small strand, but it consists of uh, thousands or dozens of thousands of uh, particular fibers and that works for the carbon fiber which is here and then in the end uh, same nanotechnologies you see a normal product like a rebar which is uh, used instead of a steel rebar and bring you lots of uh, additional values such as uh, uh, corrosion resistance uh, lightweight and chemical resistance and stuff like that. Mr. Stalirov, uh, Dr. Uh, maybe Abdul Ghafoor mentioned that you use this in for example in, in, in the walls or whatever to like uh, uh, fix itself can you just explain more? How can this help in construction? Yeah, you know, uh, this is made from carbon fiber, including tapes like this or uh, or grid like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, and you know the carbon fiber is uh, one of the strongest materials in the world and it offers you the highest ratio between the strength and the weight. So, and uh, the fibers itself uh, that comprise this material, they <coughs> offer you a strength of uh, up to over 5 uh, GPA, which is uh, many times higher than steel. Mm -hmm. That's why these materials uh, for dozens of years are used widely in uh, aerospace production and uh, now in automotive. Mm -hmm. Now what about its, uh, yeah. but what about its cost? Is it like feasible when you use it for construction? Yeah, and, and now they find their way into construction. Mostly they are used in structural reinforcements to get back concrete structures into mm -hmm. their initial strength. Mm -hmm. And it's used quite easily. So on the uh, lower part of the uh, bended structures, you just apply it with uh, the component resin. Mm -hmm. uh, or use it as a bandage uh, on the columns. Like this, this is just an example. Uh, that's just an example. There is lots of such materials uh, okay. which uses carbon fiber for this. And it's easy, it's fast, and it offers uh, the cost saving to the customers. And I was quite surprised uh, to learn that already a couple of uh, big projects were realized with these materials in Kuwait. In Kuwait. How can such technology also be used to uh, maybe have uh, green buildings or to save the environment? When you use it for structural reinforcement, uh, you basically save lots of time. And uh, lots of material, uh, if you compare it with the steel, uh, you would have uh, more people, more machinery, which uses, uh, uh, say, diesel. And uh, you have welding. In all these materials, you don't need that. So you save on energy and you save on uh, people, you save on time. And that makes our world greener. Uh, does it have any problems, like obstacles or things that when you use such technology? Like, did you really find any problems in using it? The major Any problem, negative effects? Uh, the major problem is the stubbornness of the design people, construction people, and the outdated uh, codes in some of the countries. You mean because they rely on the traditional uh, methods of construction? Yes, but uh, you can think of uh, the steel also was not traditional all the time in the history. Sure. We all started with something like uh, Saman or something like this. And okay. then gradually we, we came uh, up to steel and now into composites. 
So that to me is your optical. Uh, are you here in a private visit like just for business or there will be like mutual also work with the government because this is like a huge thing. Yeah, I mean, and you know, the government of Kuwait, it provides its uh, citizens with housing. Uh, so could there be like a bigger project going on with the government uh, directly? We're having uh, meetings with government officials on these days. Uh -huh. So we will see if uh, there'll be, you know, if, if you're not talking with the government, you're not doing anything in, uh, here. Uh -huh. So far you see that we have a good market in Kuwait for your business? Yes. Hopefully. Uh, well, I'm, I'm quite sure. Well, uh, thanks a lot for being with us. We really appreciate your visit here in Kuwait. We'd like to say, uh, how do you say thank you? Spasibo? Спасибо. So thanks a lot. نشكر ضيفنا الخبير العالمي الروسي ميخائيل ستيليروف الخبير في مجال تقنية النانو تكنولوجي والمدير العام ومدير تطوير الأعمال في شركة إن أو سي الروسية الحكومية وطبعا الدكتور فيصل عبد الغفور الرئيس التنفيذي لمصنع الواح المغنيسيوم إم جي أو بريميوم شكرا لكم أو نتمنى لكم كل التوفيق لأن هذا بالتأكيد راح يعود بالنفع لنا هنا في دولة الكويت ككل. شكرا لكم. شكرا لكم. إذا ننتقل وزميلتي منيا وفقرات أخرى في صباح الخير يا كويت خليكم معنا. Thank <laughs> you.